when you see other guitar virtuosos um, with different styles, like David Gilmour, Steve Hackett, or John McLaughlin, uh, are they an inspiration for you as well, in one way or the other? Or has it always more been like metal? No, I mean, I, my influences are more broad, you know. I mean, I started playing guitar because of Peter Frampton and, you know, some of the vinyls, rock vinyls that my dad had at home. And my dad did expose me to Gilmore and, you know, Pink Floyd and Santana and Al Di Miola and things like that, you know, because that's the stuff that he knew. So he would play it around the house and I was growing up with that. But of course, you know, as a kid, I was drawn more into the heavier things and MTV was also around that time in the early 90s. And one thing leads to another and then things start getting heavier and heavier. You start from listening to whatever, Nirvana or Guns N' Roses, and then you end up with Black Sabbath. <laughs> That's a pretty steep um, learning curve, I think. At what point did you realize, hey, fuck, I'm really, really good. I want to, to continue this path or I need to. Yeah, I didn't think I was really good, but I thought I, I, I definitely knew I wanted to continue being a gu guitar player. This is what I wanted to do. I think probably around 13 or 14 years old um, when I did discover Black Sabbath and that opened a whole new world for me. And later on hearing, you know, going from that and Metallica going to the shredder guitar world which is Ingve and Paul Gilbert and Marty Friedman and all those guys from the Shrapnel records of the 80s. Um, yeah, that kind of like became a mission in life to learn how to, you know, play, learn a lot more on the instrument and be able to play more technical things. So yeah, this, this, this was, uh, like I said, this was a mission in life for me. And yeah, I would have definitely loved to jam with Randy Rhodes, Jimi Hendrix. Sometimes I'd, I've dreamt that I've jammed with Hendrix. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I would have loved to to meet and, and hang out and jam with uh, Dime like Daryl, but uh, yeah, sadly never happened. I've been fortunate enough to play with some of my heroes. You know, I've shared the stage with some of my heroes. I've I've played with guys like Willie John Roth and Slash and Zach Wild, and you know, so it's more really way more than you can ever ask for. So I'm pretty, you know, I'm really grateful for that for those moments. Speaking of those amazing musicians, what is good music? It really depends on uh, the aesthetic of each person and what really sounds good to your ears. What, what, is, what is good music for you then? I don't know. To me, the, the, I, don't, I don't categorize music like that. It's, I, well, I mean, in styles, you know, of course, I understand what styles are and different genres and things. Um, but a good song is a good song. If it sounds good and if the idea is catchy and it gets your attention and you know you want to listen to that back you know over and over again it's a good song and it doesn't matter if it's a pop track or a metal track or whatever so that is good music to me was that why you decided with 18 i think uh, to go to berkeley yeah yeah because was, i guess it was a, a a way for me to get out of greece and go and network and meet some other people and see what is out there in the world. I mean, obviously what I chose to do is, um, is music that, you know, comes from England and America. So you have to go to the source for that. I was 18 years old, just got out of high school. I think my uncle and my aunt, because I have some family in Florida, they helped me find a place in Boston, like to some roommates that I rent a place for a semester and I just took a flight to Boston and I landed there, hopped on a cab and went to that address and I, there I was. And then I, the next day I went to, to Berkeley College and I enrolled, at, you know, I was accepted at the college, of course. I had a scholarship too. So I just enrolled and I started going to classes and, um, <laughs> and three weeks later I decided to drop out of college. Because I was just very impatient at the time and I, I just wanted to, to be, I realized that this academic stuff wasn't really for me. I wasn't... It, you know, it wasn't in my plans to just get a degree from college and do what after that. So my my goal and my dream was to 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 be in a band, start a band and write songs and make records and tour the world. And so, you know, a lot of kids would go to Berkeley at that time 
because guys like Steve Vai went or guys like uh, John Petrucci went. So and I think I was like one of those kids that you think you're gonna go there and you're gonna meet other kids and maybe form a band or something. Um, but you know, it's, it's a great school for what it is, of course. It just wasn't for me. For how long did you stay in, in the States after that? I, about a year. Then I, I, I went to visit my family in Florida and yeah. And then you came back to Greece? Or? Then I came back to Greece briefly and then I decided to continue my journey to Sweden. And that's basically where the, you know, the early beginnings of my career happened. How so? Um, originally I went to Sweden because some friends of mine were recording in a studio in Gothenburg, studio of Fredman, and their producer, the guy who owned the studio was Frederick Nordstrom. His nickname was Fredman. So he was producing a lot of bands and um, he's responsible for a lot of the Gothenburg metal bands like, you know, the death metal bands like In Flames and Dark Shock Melody and Hammerfall. So he's a guy who produced all that and gave that kind of stamp, the sound. And there were, you know, bands from all over the world going there because of that sound. And some friends of mine from Greece were recording with him and I joined them for a couple of weeks just to help them out in the studio and just to see what's happening there. And I loved Sweden, you know, and I decided to stay there. It's kind of funny. I was roommates with, with uh, Jesper, the guitarist of In Flames for the first couple of months that I lived there. He was like, I had no place to stay. So he's like, you can come stay with me. And, um, and soon enough, I started writing songs with uh, Frederick, the producer. And we, we started a band together called uh, Dream Evil. And eventually that became kind of my introduction, my, you know, my, the, one of the first things that I did. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Gus. Thank you. It was fun. <laughs>